Well, like the window, which had a nailing flange on it, this one has brick molding, and that'll stop it when it goes into place, right up tight against the sheathing. Also like the window, the first thing I'll do is check it for level. Okay, this left side has to come up a little bit. I'll put my flat bar under there and raise it and hold it with a shim shingle. Just to back up a little bit, if this were a new house, this threshold would be sitting on the subfloor. When you raise it to level it, this creates an airspace. Normally, I would set this in a bed of caulk, and when it's finished, caulk around the edges. Well, I'll snug that up just a little bit. All right, that's good. And now I'll check the side for plumb. Plumb means perpendicular to level or directly to the center of the earth. This could be a mistake using a four-foot level on the brick molding like this because the molding might not be straight. The level reads plumb. I'll check it with this straight edge. And this one is straight. All right, it's ready to nail. Just like the window, I'm going to start at the top corner Put a long finish nail through here. And then one at the bottom. Check the other side. Better check it again for straight. No, this one isn't quite right. It's tight at the top and the bottom but there's a crack here in the middle. If I can use my four foot level against the straight edge, and it reads top to bottom. And this side is plumb, so I'll just need to nail it. Again, I'll nail the top and bottom. I can use the door now because it's fixed in place. The threshold and the head are level. And the sides are plumb, but it's not finished. Well, the first thing I need to fix is this. The door is sagging. This jam is not very tight because it's only being held by the molding on the outside. This rough opening is pretty bad. It's really wide here at the top. and goes down to nothing at the bottom. I'll have to use a lot of shim shingles in different places to compensate for that. The first one I want to put in is up here by the top hinge. And I want that to be a little loose because I want to pull the jam over. So to hold that, I'll put a little four penny toenail through here. And then I'm going to nail through the jam into the framing. Now these are 10 penny finished nails. They're gonna go right through that shim and into the framing. Two nails for each shim. Drive it near the surface and then set them. That'll tighten it up. Well, that's better, but it looks like it still needs a little more. I'll take that out with the screws through the jam. Now that's much better. Uh, it looks good on this side, but there's a little problem down here. This is too tight here, and that's because this door is sagging. It wants to pull on the top hinge and push on the bottom hinge, 
and this movement shouldn't be there. This jam should be fixed to the frame. I'll take that out by putting a shim in here, and as I do that, you can see the door move over. That's about the right margin, so I'll nail it. Normally I'd use my straight edge against the jam to check it for straight, but I can now because these wedges are in the way. And so I'll use the margin on the door to check it. And then I'll need to put some shim shingles in here, just above this hinge. As you can see, I've had a little trouble keeping this door closed. One of the reasons for that is this weather stripping is new. It's putting a little pressure against the door. Another reason the door would want to swing open by itself would be that the wall is not plumb, and that could be a real problem. You could fix that on the outside by putting in a long shim, but the inside surface should be flush with the inside finish. Now the last thing I have to do is go back to the outside and nail up the trim. That looks good. Now the last thing I need to do is adjust this threshold. A little too tight. If you decide to hang your door in place, instead of using a pre-hung unit like the one I just did, you might have to do something like this to your flooring. This is a model of a floor system, and this would be a rim joist or sometimes called a joist band. This is the floor joist, and this is a subfloor. On the pre-hung unit that I just installed, the threshold set directly on the subfloor. But if you have one like this, you'll have to recess it so that the top of the sill matches up with the top of the finished flooring. This is an exterior jam set that you can buy from your lumber company, knock down, and then you assemble it with the headpiece and the sill. Now the sill is sloping, and it's an inch and three quarters thick. When I put it in its place, it's recessed onto the floor. It slopes here, and if I pick it up, you can see the rabbit that overlaps the subflooring. And then when I take the three-quarter piece for the finished floor, that'll make a nice smooth transition. Well, you saw the weather stripping that came with the pre-hung door, but if you'd want to choose your own, here are a couple of other kinds. This is a wood strip with a flexible gasket on the top. 
It goes here, right at the stop, snugged up against the door, and then it's nailed through. Here's one that's been used for years and years, and it's a copper strip. You nail it inside the rabbit, and it expands, and when the door closes, it's pressed against this edge. And here's something else that'll help you keep the cold drafts out. This is a felt weather strip called a door sweep, and it's applied on the inside of the door, sweeps along when the door is opened, and when it's closed, it seals against the threshold. Well, that about takes care of the outside doors and windows, and now it's time to move into the inside. 